Jay was born with a hole in his heart and uh, that hole needed to be fixed surgically. This was 22 years ago that his hole was fixed, so I think he was still very fortunate that the hole was diagnosed and it was fixed, you know. So typically children who have hole in their heart will present somewhere around four to eight weeks of life and they typically present with feeding difficulty. We were so proud we thought he was getting all plump and gaining weight, but really uh, they noticed that something wasn't quite right and he was actually filling up with fluid because he was in congestive heart failure due to this undiagnosed hole in his heart. Jay was growing, I mean, putting on weight, that's what you think as a new parent babies are supposed to do. And, uh, you know, again, then going and learning uh, that, you know, this weight gain is really bad, that uh, he's retaining fluid because his heart's not working properly. So, I mean, it was a shock. 15 months old, he had his open heart surgery, and it was scary, you know, four hours long. Um, but he made it through that, then he contracted pneumonia, which is common when you have um, open heart surgery and your lungs aren't functioning. I, I couldn't think about the worst case scenario, so instead I chose to focus on the best case scenario, which was you know, basically take one day at a time, you know, administer his medicines, you know, learn how to do that at first, and then you know, bottom line, continue to do that on a regular basis and, and hope for the best. As he grew, we just never knew. They always told us, we just have to wait and see. We don't know what his restrictions may or may not be. But as he grew, we would go for our annual or semi-annual checkups. The Heart Association was wonderful. Um, all the information that we got was published by the Heart Association from the doctors, the nurses there, um, used Heart Association materials. They had a support group in Poughkeepsie that I attended and spoke to other mothers um, who had children with heart Problems. I am so thankful that, um, you know, there's a lot of smart people out there who, who are, you know, doing research and, and even more grateful for those who donate money to make those research uh, projects possible because I know directly that Jay has benefited from those. But it's only with research we said, well, yes, we can offer these children life and you have patients with single ventricles living now into their 40s, you know. So there are now more adults with congenital heart disease than children with congenital heart disease because of improved survival. Going way, way back, uh, the prognosis for congenital heart disease was poor because either first there was nothing that could be done and it must have been a devastating thing for a parent to hear that the child had heart disease. I remember being 10 and knowing that a little girl up the street from me had died from a hole in her heart, which at that time was an atrial septal defect. So it still has to be devastating for a parent. I think it would be to any parent to hear that your child has a congenital heart condition and needs surgery, but the prognosis is better. What can be done is so much more than it used to be. We need to support any organization that does research or education so that we can all be healthy and that they can come up with cures because you never know. Um, you know, it could be your grandchild, your niece, your nephew, um, your husband that needs those services and you'll be thankful when they're there. Looking back, it is pretty special and pretty unique that a little kid with a, you know, a quarter size hole in his heart was able to grow up, lift weights, be physically active and, you know, play football in college and high school, play lacrosse in college and high school. You know, it was pretty special to look back and think that I was able to do some of the things that I did where no one knew that 20 years ago if I'd, you know, even be able to run without losing my breath. When I would see him catch a ball at F&M, it can't help but run through your mind. You never thought this was possible, and it is. And just because he plays with such love and such gusto that you're just so happy that, that he was able to do it. I can remember him being in the hospital as a, 
two week old and again when he was 15 months old and, and there were some scary times and then to see him excelling and having fun and, and thriving athletically and, and even more so academically, that was very rewarding. I had an awesome time uh, coaching this past fall. Uh, it kind of gave me a way to stay in the game. It's a really neat experience. I'm really glad I decided to do it. And I really like just being around the game still and actually teaching these kids something that they might find useful. I'm a coach and my father was a coach. Jay's grandfather was a coach. It certainly wasn't planned that Jay's going to be a coach. I think it's kind of neat to see him uh, keep his hand in the game. I want him to do his own thing, but it is neat to share those experiences with him. Hopefully I've taught him a few things over the years, but now, you know, he doesn't know it, but I'm learning some stuff from him. Even now, the healthcare and science and technology, everything is so much more advanced than it was 20 years ago that the possibilities, I think, are endless for a kid, you know, with any sort of health deficiency, especially with your heart, everything is just so much more advanced. And it's because people, you know, donate and fund the, this new research and new technology that kids are able to beat the odds like I did.